All right, so now that we have calculated the effective arrival rate into station B, we can use the um, MMC formulas uh, to evaluate the performance of this server at steady state. So what I'm going to do is to first calculate the uh, utilization of this server. So uh, the utilization row B is going to be equal to lambda effective B. Uh, divided by, since uh, we have three servers in the formula for the utilization, we have C uh, times mu B in the denominator. So I'm going to have 267.32 divided by C is 3 times our uh, service rate for station B, which is 120. And this is going to give me a, a utilization of 0.7474%. Now that I have the utilization, uh, the only thing that I need to calculate in order to be able to use these formulas is this value of P0 that appears in uh, two of the formulas that, uh, that we need to calculate. So um, P0 is basically the probability of having zero entities um, in the system at steady state. Uh, let me just go through the calculations and you will see that it's not actually as complicated as it looks like. So um, so what I'm going to do is uh, is that I'm going to calculate P0 for station B. So um, I'm going to start with the first um, expression. So in the first expression I have C which is 3 times rho which is 7.4 uh, sorry, 0.74 uh, to the power of 3. Uh, in the denominator, I have uh, 3 factorial, which will be 6 times 1 minus utilization, 0.74. So that's my first uh, term. Uh, this second term that I have here is basically uh, summation. So in this summation, the variable n starts at 0 and goes up to c minus 1, which in our case is 2. c is 3, so we, go, we start from n equal to 0 to um, n equal to 2. So what I'm going to do is basically I have, if I substitute n as 0, uh, anything to the power of 0 will be 1 and 0 factorial is also 1, so my first term in the summation is going to be 1. Um, the second term is going to be C, which is 3, times my utilization, 0.74. Um, N is now 1, and um, in the denominator I have 1 factorial, which is 1. The next term, now N is 2, so I have C, which is 3, times my utilization, 0.74, this sign to the power of 2. And in the denominator, I have 2 factorial. So I will have 2 here. Sorry about that. 2. And the whole expression that I've just written here um, to the power of negative 1. So if I actually go ahead and do the calculations, what I have is uh, the first term will be equal to 7.01 plus 1. Uh, this term is going to be 2.22. And the last term will be equal to 2.48 to the power of negative 1. And if you do the math, you will end up with 0. 0, 8. So this is the probability of having zero entities um, at this server at steady state. So now the rest of the calculations will just be a practice of substituting uh, the values into these formulas. And if you actually do the math, this is what you get. So for the um, L, B, what I'm getting is uh, 3.83. And for WB, what I'm getting is um, 0 0.01 hours.
As you can see, I have performed the calculations for server D. So you can see the final results here. Now we need to find the um, average number in system for the whole network and the time that an average entity spends in the system at steady state. So calculation of the uh, average number in system is fairly simple. So we just need to add uh, time and in, or number in station A plus number in station B plus number in station C plus number in station D uh, plus number in station E. So this is what we have calculated. These are what we have calculated. So um, what I'm getting for the average number in system is 35.87. However, for the time in system, we cannot do this summation. So for time and system, we cannot do um, basically, we cannot add the individual time and systems. And the reason is, as you can see in our network, not all of it, not all of the entities go through the same route in the system. So some of the entities will go through servers B and D, some of those may even be processed multiple times on these two servers. The rest of them will go through C and E and you know a proportion of them may go through B and so on. And those that arrive from this basically source will never go to station A. So as you can see we cannot simply add the individual timing systems. So instead what we need to do is to use Little's law to find the, the um, timing system. So according to Little's law uh, the average number in system for any system, whether it's a single server system or a network of servers, is going to be equal to um, the total external arrival rates into the system times the average waiting time in the system. So based on Little's law, we can go ahead and calculate our average time in system, which will be basically our number in, average number in system divided by lambda. And for this system, we will basically have lambda 1 plus lambda 2. We will get 0.14 hours for the average time and system for an average entity. I'm going to spend a, a couple of minutes uh, talking about the queuing model of the same network that I have developed in Excel. So as you can see I have highlighted the parameters of the model in yellow and uh, my outputs or the performance measures that I'm interested in in green, so my utilization for each server, number and time at each server, and also um, number and system and time and system for the whole network. So what I would like to do with this uh, model is to basically see how the performance of the system changes when, with different combinations of uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2. And I would like to uh, show you guys how you can use uh, Excel's data table to perform such analysis. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to choose one of my performance metrics to do this uh, what-if analysis and I'm going to choose uh, time and system. So I want to see how time and system changes based on different uh, arrival rates. But I would like to see my time and system in minutes, so I'm just going to multiply it by 60. So 8.43 uh, minutes is the time and system uh, with the current parameters. And I'm going to change my uh, two arrival rates, so basically lambda 1. I'm going to change it from um, the, its current value, 115 per hour, uh, to 134 uh, per hour. And I'm going to change my, or vary my lambda 2 from 135 per hour to 145. So this is going to be my uh, lambda 2. So let me uh, make these bold here. So in order to complete my uh, data table, 
I just need to select all my uh, cells here, go to the data ribbon, what if analysis tab, and data table. And I will uh, need to tell Excel where these uh, parameters are located uh, in my Excel sheet. So in the rows, uh, I'm going to have lambda 2. And in the column, I have input lambda 1. So I'm just going to select the associated cells for these two parameters. And when you say OK, you will see that Excel automatically calculates the uh, time and system for different combinations of these two parameters. Now, what I would really like to see here is basically the scenarios where my system becomes unstable. For example, if I see a negative value or if I see a value that uh, Excel couldn't calculate because I have a zero in uh, one of the denominators. So um, in order to identify these scenarios, I can uh, go to my home ribbon after I have selected my cells and then go to the conditional formatting tab. And then um, I would like to define a new rule to uh, basically, by, by defining a formula, to change the format of uh, these cells. So I'm just going to select the user formula to determine which cells to format. And the formula that I would like to use is basically equal sign um, R9, which is the first cell in my matrix, greater than zero. And I would specifically want to change the uh, color of the cells where I have a stable system. So I'm going to select the color uh, that I want and then OK, OK. And now Excel highlights the scenarios where my system is stable and I can uh, identify the scenarios that result in an unstable system. The last thing that we're going to do in this lab is to um, verify our queuing solution using a simulation model of this queuing system. So um, we're going to start by building the initial simulation model. So I have my source 1 and source 2. I have five server objects. Uh, let me zoom out here a little bit. So I have uh, basically server 1, I have server 2, server 3, um, server 4, server 5, um, and I need a sync object, so sync. Then I'm going to connect these up. Um, let me just move my second source here. So um, I'm going to double click on the connector. I have a connector connection that goes here. Server 1 to server 2, server 2 to server 4. Uh, server 4 to the sink and then from server 4 back to server 2 Then I also have a connector from 1 to 3 um, 3 to input of just uh, this can be conf confusing sometimes just make sure you go from the output node of the server 3 to input node of server 2 and then um, server 3 to 5, 5 to the sink. And I also go from the second source to the input node of server 3. And it seems that I have all the initial routings in place. So let me just go ahead and run the model just to make sure that I'm not missing a connector. So I'm just going to run in a faster speed. So it looks like everything is connected. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to input the parameters for my objects. So I'm going to start with my two sources. So um, I have calculated in this Excel sheet uh, the inter-arrival times in minutes, and we know everything is exponentially distributed. So we can either use these values or we can simply use um, uh, 1 over the rate in our expression. So I'm just going to uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, for my first source, use 1 over my arrival rate in hours. And this will give me inter-arrival times um, in the units of hours. 
for the second source, I'm going to have a random exponential with mean 1 over 140. And I just need to make sure that I change the units to hours. So I have my arrival processes set up. Now I'm going to go and, uh, ahead and input the parameters for my server objects. So again, everything is exponentially distributed. So for the first server, I have random dot exponential, and I need to input uh, the mean, which I have calculated here. So for the first server, it's 0.4 minutes. And I'm just going to copy this expression because I know all my other servers also have an exponential distribution, but just with a different mean value. So for my second server, I have 0.5 as the average um, inter-arrival time or mean inter-arrival time. For my fourth server, um, I'm going to have um, exponential with mean 7.5, that's server D. For the third server, I have exponential with mean um, 0.25 and for the last server I have exponential with mean um, 0.75 and before I forget I need to uh, change the capacity of the servers that have more than one server so um, I know server um, let me go back to my table here. So server 1 has one unit of capacity, server B has 3. So I just need to change my initial capacity to 3 for server 2. Um, C is 1, D is 4, so server 4 will be 4. And I have uh, one unit of capacity for server 5 and server C and server A. The last thing I need to do to complete my initial model is to um, modify the selection weights for my um, uh, connectors. So I know 25% of the parts go from uh, 1 to 2 and um, so I can either um, put 25 for the first connector and then 75 for the second one or alternatively I could have just used 0.25 or and 0.75 as long as the proportions are right um, the routing will work correctly um, so the next thing is um, from C to B I have 0.7 and uh, 0.3 so this time instead of 70 and uh, 30 I just used 0.7 and 0.3 and the last thing is this um, uh, feedback loop so 0.3 and 70% or 0.7 um, go to the sink. So here I have run an experiment with 30 replications, each of length 300 hours and 100 hours of warmer period. And I have filtered out the values in my pivot grid that I don't care about at this time um, so that I can compare my simulation results with my queuing results easily. So for example, for number and system from simulation, I'm getting 35.16 with a half width of 0.99, uh, while from the queuing solution, uh, I'm getting 35.87. And um, you can go ahead and compare the other values, like the utilizations and time and system. And in fact, when you do that, you will see that our simulation results are uh, pretty close to our um, queuing results. So we are now confident that our queuing calculations are correct.